Welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti. My guest this evening is Clinton Police Chief Vin DeMeo. Chief DeMeo, welcome. How are you, my friend? Good to see you, my friend. How Thank are you? Thank you for having me. What's new? Always good. There's lots going on. There's a lot going business. on. It's been a while since we've been here, so we haven't it chatted been. in quite a while. Oh, absolutely. I noticed I still didn't make the credits. No. I, I didn't see, I made, you didn't see <laughs> my beautiful mug on the screenshots coming up. The dog is there. but Yeah, the dog and Jason are there, but we'll, we'll, well fix that. I already know where my place is, so it's good. <laughs> we'll, so we'll fix that's that. That's fine. <laughs> we'll so, fix that. Well, thanks for having me. No problem. What's up? What's new? Well, you know, whatever we want to talk about, well, there's uh, there's tons going on in the, in the fine town of Clinton. It's been... Uh, when was the last time I was on the show? It's been a while. It's been quite a while, right? It has but, been you know, a while. You've had my commissioners on. You've had some other folks on. So yep. you, you've, been ke- you've been kept in a loop. But, exactly. Uh, you know, there's been a lot uh, within the past year, especially, I think, the town of Clinton has really seen a, a blossoming. We're really starting to see a lot of development in town, yep. um, you know, building a lot of homes. Uh, there's a lot of commercial development. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody knows that the old Morgan, your yep. old alma mater, Absolutely. is now... Uh, down and we finally are not looking at that albatross anymore. That's right. Uh, so uh, we're happy that Big Y's in there. They seem to be doing very well. Oh, yeah. uh, there's a nice plan in place for that development of that whole area. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's going to be a lot more work to come, especially with traffic coming and a, a number of other things that are going to need to take place there to make that area a little bit safer because we're going to see a lot of traffic volume there, obviously, uh, coming in now. But I think that's great for the town. If anybody's driven up and down Route 1, you see there's uh, tons of new buildings. Um, there's new businesses coming into town, uh, and, and really, I mean, the house prices in, in town just exploded uh, this past year. So I think that's great for our little town. It's really nice to see the direction that we're moving. Um, so pretty excited about all that stuff. Absolutely. And, of course, the outlets are still busy. Outlets are nonstop busy. <laughs> so I don't know. Westbrook is probably upset with that because they're, yeah. they're not doing so good no. over here. And I wish I had their geographic location because right. the, way, <coughs> excuse me, the way that's set up, it really, it, it's great for traffic flow. Yeah. As, as you know, in Clinton, uh, it gets backed up rather quickly, in, and we have heavy volume times uh, for the Black Friday weekend yep. and for Memorial Day and tax-free week. Uh, it creates some traffic problems for us just because of the actual physical layout of that complex. So, and that's going to be exacerbated too with you know the new complex across the street. So, mm-hmm. um, working with the state and we're working with the developers to make sure that uh, we're going to try and make that as safe and as user friendly as possible. Absolutely. Now, speaking of safe and user friendly, how did you guys? How are you guys surviving during the pandemic? Uh, well, we, we, we had a little bit of a rough spell. Uh, for, the, for the Delta variant, we did very well. Okay. Uh, most of us uh, came through and nobody really got sick. We didn't lose a lot of time. Uh, right after Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. uh, pretty much everybody's got smacked with, with the Omicron. So oh boy. We had, we had uh, a high turn. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people infected, a lot of people had to take time out to follow the protocols. So we have protocols in place, yep. you know, to keep the workplace safe. But uh, it seemed that this was uh, far more virulent than, than the other strain uh, in that it just seemed like much more people caught it. It didn't really have, we didn't have anybody seriously ill, right. thank goodness. There you go. um, it kind of just went through everybody quick, like a cold or, um, right. you know, a little touch of bronchitis or something. But uh, we did have quite a few people affected by it. So it, it makes us managing a 24-7 operation, it gets, it gets difficult. Now you, you guys are a 24-7 operation. How many of you are there? So we, at any given time, it could be anywhere between three officers responding on the road and, yep. you know, two uh, in the dispatch center to five. I mean, so, I mean, there's only 27 sworn. So we are oh. constantly running, running, running. Um, we have a high call volume yep. uh, with, like we talked about, the mall and, and our other, uh, we run all the medical calls for Clinton as well. So when you oh. call 911, it's not just the fire department and the ambulance that are coming. Our police officers are our first responders, ah. so they'll go there first. Uh, so the, the call volume is very high, um, and our officers don't have a lot of downtime. And then no. with all the new restrictions and all the other um, things that we have to do as far as reporting and mm-hmm. administration, uh, a lot of the time is taken up. They go to a call, but they have you know several hours worth of paperwork at the end of that call, which keeps them you know tied up. And what I'm looking at is we also, bef- before I forget, we've got a shoreline enforcement diaper drive coming up. Yes. Let's talk about so that. So the annual diaper yeah. drive. So this is, I think, our fifth year. Okay. Uh, we started back with, with Tina and uh, Bear Necessities. Yep. 
back in, I want to say, first year I got here, maybe 2017, I think we started it. Okay. Um, and it's grown now. Now we have participation with all the PDs on the shoreline. So it's us, it's Troop F here in Westbrook, Madison, uh, North Brantford, Brantford, Guilford, and I think uh, Old Saybrook does um, does a piece of it as well. Okay. So it's really grown and we get great participation. And I think now, especially uh, with two years of this pandemic and uh, so many businesses being shut down, uh, I think now is a really important time for, uh, for, for us to have this, this diaper drive. Now, how does it work? So you could bring uh, any one of the participating uh, PDs has a drop off in the lobby. Okay. Uh, you can also this year, uh, Bear Necessities has a link right to Amazon. You can donate directly right through Amazon oh, cool. to, the, to the diaper drive, which oh, nice. I guess uh, they started last year and it worked out very well. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm always astounded by the generosity oh, yeah. of the people here uh, on the shoreline, especially Clinton. Our, our, our town is really just, it's an amazing little uh, part of the world here that everybody oh, kind of is always looking for ways to pitch in and help their neighbor. And it's astonishing, it really is. I, I'm really touched every time we go out and we ask for help, we ask for assistance for people that need it. Mm -hmm. People always answer and they answer often. Yeah. So it, it's a great thing. Absolutely. Now, is, that, is it just the whole month of February? For it the is, uh, two, first two weeks. So first two weeks. Uh, okay. starting, kicking off tomorrow yeah. is, is the official kickoff date and it runs through to the 15th. All right. So, and we usually do pretty well. I mean, we usually take in quite, quite a bit and enough for say six months to, right. to run the diaper bank, uh, which services most of this greater New Haven area. Mm -hmm. Now you all, you guys also have with the, with the town, a community assistance team. Yes, our, our, Who C, is it? our CCAT team. So our Clinton community assistance team is a, is a joint venture uh, between a number of entities. So uh, basically the way it came to fruition was, we realized that we have a lot of seniors uh, in Clinton, a lot of our, our, our population is aging, right. uh, and we felt that you know it's important for them to be able to age in place, you know, age in the homes and in the neighborhoods that they grew up and help, you know, they grew up in and, and lived for so long because right. they're a vital part of the neighborhood. Absolutely. Um, but as we get older, uh, you know, sometimes you're you're on you need some little minor assistance things to help you uh, remain at home, right. whether that be you know a ride to the doctor or. Uh, a lift to the grocery store, or maybe you just need a little bit of help um, around the house, just doing right. little odd jobs, cleanups, maybe, or maybe you just need somebody to talk to. Exactly. You know, maybe you just need some companionship. Exactly. So um, we'd always felt that, that that population in Clinton had been underserved. Um, you know, we have a number of programs that we started, and, and we're always trying to be very proactive in, in looking at ways that uh, we as an organization can kind of prevent crime from happening. Um, and, and lessen the chance that people can be victims. Um, so we're always looking at you know, what groups we feel are at risk um, and, and where we can direct some of our resources as a police department as opposed to a response when you call us, something's happened and then we have to go and mitigate through that. We're, we're, our feeling is if we can prevent that from happening, right. we've already been successful. So the um, problem is, we don't have very many people and right. we have a high call volume. So yeah. uh, being able to administer a program where we'd be able to you know, maybe pick up Mrs. Jones and drive her to the doctor uh, because you just had surgery a couple of weeks ago or mm. um, you know, take Mr. Smith over to the, over to the grocery store because he has to pick up a few things and his normal caregiver is, is away for a week. Right. Um, for us to manage that logistically was really uh, a very uh, tall order because we just don't have the staff to do it. So um, fortuitously, mm -hmm. we uh, hooked up with a group out of Manchester called Your Community Cares. Okay. And uh, they have a website platform which allows our volunteers and, and our people that are requesting services to link up. Um, and the beauty of it is is that you don't have to do it like every Tuesday right. at two o'clock or right. every Friday afternoon you're at four o'clock you're right. locked into something because Everyone has a busy life and, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you're not able to do that. Exactly. But this way you can sign on, sign that, the job gets assigned, you go ahead and do it. Um, and then if you don't want to do another one for two weeks, don't do one. If you want to do another one for a month, don't do it. But if you want right. to do one tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day, you, can you do have it. that ability and you have that flexibility and that, that website platform allows us the ability to have our volunteers know 
you know, what jobs are being requested and allows them to fill it to fit their schedule. Right. So um, it's been huge. Uh, we, we try to look at, again, as a, as a holistic approach. We got help to start the program from some of our local charities and some of our local businesses. So okay. uh, the Clinton Rotary Club yep. gave us a lot of assistance. Families Helping Families mm -hmm. gave us a lot of assistance. Uh, People's United Bank sure. gave us a lot of assistance. So again, the idea is to get our Clinton volunteers. Uh, we're a little bit different than the way your community cares normally works. Basically, you could sign up in a community uh, onto their platform and once you clear the background checks, uh, you can go ahead and start doing the deeds. Um, we here in Clinton decided that we wanted to have a little bit more control over that and we wanted to basically um, be the support system for that community assistance team. So the police department, we help provide them with training, you know, whether it be basic first aid, um, just helping to understand some of the things that they may encounter with some elderly people. You know, a lot of times there's a, a loss of visual acuity, of, of, of you know, hearing acuity. There may be um, some some barriers to uh, what most people would think would be normal. Right. Um, and if you're not, you know, if you haven't been trained to expect that, you may react poorly. So uh, we we like to provide uh, some help for our, our team members and support. And it's also I think helps that the people that are requesting the services mm -hmm. know that anybody that's going to come to you in Clinton is going to come through us that have been trained through right. our, our, you know, our, our PD and, and we have a connection to that. So, and we have a great group of people. I mean, just the, the, the core group of people that have started this are just amazing, just amazing, amazing people. Who are they? So I have a whole group of volunteers. All right. So, um, you know, it's it's your usual suspects that you uh, your, your mom knows all of them. So <laughs> I probably know most <laughs> yeah, of them exactly. Um, so right now, our, our main point person is uh, Lourdes Rojas. Um, she's she's taken over for um, being the, the the point person on it. I but know that I've name. got I've got an, I've got a number. Well, she was uh, really large with Shoreline Community Women. Yep. Um, so and she's just a great person to to, to be on point. And then we have. You know the whole pretty committee, the whole oh boy, oh, the oh whole, boy, the whole you got pretty all. committee is all is all part of it. And okay. I and I think you know my my hope is that uh, we haven't been able to implement as as quickly and as deeply as we would have liked because of the pandemic. Right, um, it slowed us down some, um, but I think when the program really gets up running and established, it's really going to help continue to build um, a lot of relationships. So I think a lot of people when they start doing um, these deeds for for people in need uh, are going to really start to develop a relationship with it because uh, think about it it's not a big deal right to go change a light bulb no but if you've been home in your house for like three months yeah, right. and you can't get up the ladder yeah. to change the light bulb and it's forcing you to go to bed every night at seven o'clock because you're afraid you're going to trip because exactly. you can't change that's a big deal to that person absolutely right so what does it cost for us to, to just run over there and say, oh, no problem, Mr. Smith, we change the light bulb for you. Yeah. You've made a huge difference in that person's life. Absolutely. Um, and then and my hope is that, you know, we can get some younger people involved um, and then they can start having some conversations like, you know, hey, I didn't know that Mr. Jones, did you know that Mr. Jones was in the Navy in World War II? And they, yeah, you know, right, exactly. You know, things that they would never have had conversations. And I just think it, it goes to build a much, you know, better community. Would you mind sticking around for another segment? Not a problem. All right, we'll be right back. Information is power, especially in times of uncertainty. In the age of 24-7 breaking news headlines, viral tweets, and social media rumors, we all need to take extra steps to verify information before accepting and sharing what we read online. Whether inaccurate information is purposely posted to deceive or defraud individuals or shared unknowingly by people who believe it's true, misinformation can be dangerous. Is there a vaccine? Are certain blood types immune? Are additional stimulus checks coming? When will we open back up? Questions are expected. And they deserve accurate answers. We need you to rely on information from official sources and credible subject matter experts. For both Connecticut specific information and federal resources, visit ct.gov backslash coronavirus. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti sitting here with Clinton Police Chief Vin DeMeo. Chief DeMeo, welcome back. Thank you. It Thank seems you, like we friend. never left. I know. It is, like, <laughs> it is like we never left. So we talked about in the first segment about the committees that you guys are on. Let's open up this segment talking about the police commission. Sure. 
So, um, you know, as you know, we have a five member elected police commission right. in the town of Clinton and we just had uh, elections. So three of those members are renewed uh, and they were all, so uh, the commission really didn't change other than uh, our longtime chairman, Peter Niles, yeah, sold right. his home and he moved back to, uh, to Boston. So, you know, we, right. we, we miss Peter yeah. uh, quite a bit. Um, he was just a great, you know, he's a great leader. He was a great person to work for and work with. He really cared about the town. He had a vision about um, how he felt the police department should look mm -hmm. uh, within the town uh, and, and was very supportive of me uh, and the things that we were all trying to do. Um, so, and I, and I think, you know, I'm very blessed to have uh, such a wonderful commission to work for now. Uh, they, they, they really support uh, the direction that we're going. Um, that there's not, you know, you look around and, and you can see that oftentimes it becomes very political and yeah. it becomes, uh, you know, a format for people that, you know, kind of bring forth their own agendas. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really not what the Clinton Police Commission is about. We're really, um, you know, they make sure that we're, we're doing the right thing, that the direction that we're moving is serving the community properly. Uh, that we're not wasting people's money. Exactly. Obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's a true New England thing. We don't want, you know, we're not gonna spend more than we should for anything. Nope. Um, so, uh, you know, they, they, they're very engaged, uh, they stay on track, um, but they're also open to new ideas, which is, I think, extremely important because this is a very dynamic uh, business law enforcement. And, and in the past two years, it has become, it's turned completely on its ear. Yep. Um, you know, there's been a huge, massive amount of legislation in the state of Connecticut. Um, a lot of far-reaching impacts, a lot mm -hmm. of things weren't thought through, um, and a lot of deadlines were placed on us without a lot of uh, support systems or guidance uh, from the legislature. Right. So it's been very, it's been, you know, it's keeping us on our toes. Um, and we're responding as, as best we can. And, and the last thing you want to do is have a divisiveness uh, amongst your commission. Yeah. Um, which just makes it makes it difficult for everybody. It's very difficult. Uh, I think you know the past year and a half, it's been extremely difficult for anybody in law enforcement, uh, and I'm always concerned for the health and welfare of my officers. Yeah. Um, you know, you're constantly vilified. Everything you do is is second guessed. You're mm -hmm. not given a fair shake, and um, you know, for the most part, Clinton is very very supportive of us. So, but it's hard to tune out all that noise <laughs> mm -hmm. that's constantly, you know, raining down on your head. So, um, so for the most part, uh, I, it's uh, it's it's been a it's been a great working relationship. Um, you know, we, we have uh, Ed Tespin now is now moved into uh, right. the chairman. He that's was right. our former vice chair with with Mr. Niles, and that's good for me because he he's actually the last remaining member of the yeah. police commission that hired me back that's in right. 2016. So. Um, there's always that fear that, uh, you know, with the loss of continuity, exactly. people forget, you know, we've come a very long way as a department and we've, we've changed really basically the entire way we do business uh, and, and our entire service delivery models completely changed. Um, and we've been very successful at a lot of things. But um, when you lose that and somebody says, okay, well, you know, what are you doing for me now? Exactly. You know, yeah, you're doing this, but you forget you started at a certain point and now you're up here. Um, so... But uh, I think we have good communication with, with all that, uh, with the group. Um, Lynn Heidegg's on for another term. Okay. Uh, Rob Derry yeah. is finishing out his term. Uh, the Democratic Party was able to place um, Paul Melanson onto the commission when, when Peter left because he was midterm. Okay. Uh, and then Don Morelli was also elected for another term. So I've got some, uh, you know, we've got some continuity there. We've all kind of worked together for, for quite a while now. Uh, with the exception of Mr. Melanson, but he's, you know, he, he's, uh, he's former military. He was a former Madison police officer. Oh, okay. So he, he understands a lot of the things. And, and again, he's, he's, he's not coming in to say, this is how I think it should be done. Right. He's saying, these are the things that I think we should do. And, you know, he asks pertinent questions. Um, so it, it's, it's always very helpful. You know, I mean, that's, that's what law enforcement is supposed to be. We do have civilian oversight. We, we get our power from the people. And it's important that we have a, a commission that's engaged and understands, um, you know, what the police department is doing on a regular basis. 
And obviously, Rob Deering knows exactly what you guys do that's day it. in and day out because... That's it. So, yes, we have Commissioner Derry, who is uh, in, uh, a sergeant with the state... Well, actually, he's a lieutenant now with the state police. That's right. So, uh, for another short period of time... I was going to say, he's exactly. about ready to leave like the rest of them. That's so right. That's right. I don't know where we're going to be. I don't, wanna, I don't know what this is all going to look like yeah, in, uh, I don't know. In, in July, especially here in Westbrook, where you have a resident trooper program, same thing in Killingworth. I, you know, it's got to be a little bit scary if you're yeah. sitting on these government boards and you've been contracting this law enforcement service. I don't know if, if they're going to be able to sustain it w yeah. with the numbers that are that are leaving. And it's all your institutional knowledge. Right. Um, everybody that's, you know, tenured and, and has uh, the time on it are the ones that are leaving. So you're having we're having difficulty nationwide recruiting anybody to law enforcement. So. Uh, it's been an extremely difficult uh, task, and it's only going to get worse. I mean, nobody wants this job anymore. No. Uh, you know, when I got this job back in 1989, it was it was honestly like winning the lottery. Right. Right. I mean, you were so happy to get the job because if there was one opening, you probably have 500 or 1,000 people right. um, trying to get on. And now, we can't we can't get anybody. No. I mean, we, we we can't get anyone. It's it's really it's a sad state of affairs. So. We're going to have to figure that out, and the legislature is going to have to give us some help on that. What could the legislature, legislature well, do to help? Uh, they, number one, they need to start uh, supporting a little bit more, supporting law enforcement rather than uh, um, demanding all these things from law enforcement. Uh, you know, they need to provide training and, and hiring incentives and other incentives that are going to incentivize um, the profession. Right. As opposed to demonize the profession, which has unfortunately happened, I think, and that's what's scaring everybody away. Now, if you want to become a police officer, how hard is it? You obviously have to go through the academy. It's a very difficult. It. Tell us about it. Yeah, it's well. Listen, it's a very difficult process. It's a very long process, and it's difficult for a reason. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. we, I think we can see, you know, the amount of trust that needs to be placed in you, right. uh, and and we need to know that you're a person of character and of the intellectual capabilities, moral capabilities, to be able to react under very stressful situations. I mean, many people go through life and they have one or two, you know, bad things happen that are really like emergencies or, right. or scary incidences, and they're like it shapes their whole life, right? Yeah. Well, these guys are doing it two or three times a shift. Right, right. You know, we're doing yeah. it hundreds of times. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, you know, and then uh, when, you know, everybody wants to feel as if they're appreciated for what they do, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and every time something goes wrong, you know, you're, you're forced to make a split second decision and then everybody immediately says you're wrong and right. you should just be immediately dismissed or nobody wants to hear exactly what happened exactly. and there's no due process on one side. Um, everybody rails for it on, on, on the criminal side, but right. nobody <laughs> wants to give it. Um, Absolutely. It's just, uh, I guess it's just symptomatic of, you know, where we sit in the instant social media, mm -hmm. you know, Facebook post, Instagram, TikTok, yep. Snapchat society. Yeah, Everything right. is now instantaneously, but unfortunately, <laughs> that's <laughs> a very short, small, narrow window. Exactly. You know. You have to take things into perspective, and we need to get back to, I think, a little more point of civility, number one, with everybody. And I think we need to just really start, if we're going to look at issues, we need to look at them holistically. Everybody wants a silver bullet, and there's no silver bullet fixes to anything no, anymore. Of course you not. know, Complex problems demand complex uh, yeah. uh, you know, exactly. solutions. So. <laughs> You can't have an easy solution to a complex no, problem. No, of course not. Now, do you guys get out into the community in the PD, and what, what, what are you guys up to? Yeah, listen, we're always out. Uh, you know, we have any number of programs that we're always, we're always running. We have our police and youth group. Yeah. Uh, we have our D.A.R.E. program that puts us in the schools. Uh, we have our car seat installation program, puts us in touch with a lot of different people. Uh, we're working on, uh, right now with Families Helping Families, we're working on another safety day to okay, do some right. bike safety right. uh, and try and get some of our other local charities together. Uh, lately, it's just thought, it, it just occurs to me that I think, you know, we have so many different charitable groups in the town of Clinton that, that we're all working for the same thing. So right. um, uh, we're really kind of just trying to work together to get everybody out there forward facing, all of us in the same, you know, all the groups together to say, hey, listen, we can all rely on one another and pr provide a better product to, to the community.
Let's backtrack for a second. Diaper drive. Diaper drive, again, February 1 through February 15. Bare necessities, you can drop off uh, at any, any police department here on the shoreline. Obviously, we're open 24-7. You can come drop them off in Clinton anytime. Um, there's a box right in the lobby. Uh, all, it's, a, it's a great cause. We've been partners with, with Bear Necessities now for five years. Um, a great, great bunch of people really working hard to keep the kids in the community uh, healthy and safe. And if people want more information on anything Absolutely. that the town PD is up to, where are they going? You can go right to our website. You can go right to our Facebook page. Um, either one of those is a good landing site. And Whatever you need to know. And every, every, always here. Every, every, everything is there. All, well, the inf all the information's there. Pretty hopefully, much. Hopefully. And if pretty, it's not, pick up the phone, pretty, give us a call. We'll pretty, answer your question. I, pretty yeah. much. Do the best we can. Absolutely. Our website needs a little work. I'll give you that. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. So. Absolutely. Well, Chief Indemail, we're about to run out of time, so hopefully we'll, we'll see you again fast. soon. Absolutely. Thanks for some time. All right. You got it. Thanks for having me. Thanks, buddy. Take care. I'll be having Vindemail. I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night. We'll see you next time.